thought I was going to be just drawing blood, not procuring tissue from aborted fetuses. They part of a Planned Parenthood and they get part of the money. I see, so I say, okay, what are your, what are you looking to supply today? You know, you can imagine where they would run with this, like, you're selling body part, you know. My name's Holly O'Donnell, I'm 24, and I'm a phlebotomist and an ex-procurement technician. For those who don't know what a phlebotomist is, basically you draw blood for a living. I was looking to help the public. I mean, I'm looking to make Blood draw is easy for, for children, for people. I'm, I'm very passionate about people. I find myself, I'm very humane and very sensitive. I thought I was going to be just drawing blood, not procuring tissue from aborted fetuses. I basically just went on Craigslist, typed in the word phlebotomist lab technician, and I clicked the link to apply. It said procurement technician. I went to the website, it said STEM Express. And, um, Apply now. I applied. It was really short. It wasn't even an application. It was your name, your phone number. That was it. And I got an email back and I interviewed. And they don't even let you know in the interview what you're doing. Sun Express is a company that hires procurement techs to draw blood and dissect dead fetuses and sell the parts to researchers. They partner with Planned Parenthood and they get part of the money because we pay them to use their facilities and they, they get paid from it. They do get some kind of benefit. We were asked to procure uh, certain tissues like uh, brain, liver, thymus, pancreas, heart, lungs, skin, pretty much anything on the, on the fetus. It's basically huge trafficking of fetal tissues. Right. So I'll yeah. just take a couple minutes. Sure. And Brianna is my assistant. Hi. Hi. So. <laughs> oh, you're warm. I want to hang on to you. <laughs> so um, I was talking to Mary about what I'm trying to offer to clinics as a procurement service, and she said, "You know all about this." Oh, we have so, already a relationship oh, with you, ABR. You oh, okay. Yeah. So that is sort of sort of thing you're doing. It's a yeah. startup. Uh -huh. So, uh, so there's already a service there. I'm thinking with my business been, head that using them for over 10 years, a really okay. a long time, so I, I you know, just kind of renegotiate the contract. They're doing the, the I can't remember what they call it, but the big uh, collection for um, government uh, level uh, collections and things like that. So, and okay. so I'm trying to think of other uh, uh, providers in uh, town. There was so I don't want to sound like a salesman here, but okay. I'm going to. So we return a portion of our fees mm -hmm. to the clinic. Oh. So just to, as a way of thank you for uh -huh. this, um, just trying to establish. Right, get a toe yes. in and make, yes. it, make it sound, make it work. Right. All right. They weren't looking for an, a compassionate individual at all. They were just looking for someone who could get as much money, as many samples. I think that's why they, they were interested in me as a phlebotomist, because I can draw quick. So I think that they looked at that and they wanted someone who could get the numbers up. The owner, Kate Dyer, she used to be a procurement tech and then she went and started her own business. And now she's making a lot of money based off the <laughs> poor girls who half the time don't even want to get abortions. It's a pretty sick company. Okay, so I'd like, what, what would, uh, what would you expect for intact um, tissue? What what sort of compensation? What sort of? Well, why don't you start by telling me what you used to pay? Okay, I don't think so. I I'd like to. I would like to know what would make you happy. What would work for you? Well, you know, in negotiations, a person who throws up the figure first is at a loss, right? So. <laughs> you, no, I, I don't look at it that way. I know. You want to play that game, I get I it. But I no, no. Wanna, no, I want to lowball because I'm used to low things from. You know what? Um, uh, if you lowball, I'll, I'll act pleasantly surprised and you'll know it's a lowball. Okay. What I want to know is uh, what, would, what would work for you. Don't lowball it. Okay. Tell me what you really.
pure, they would get a certain percentage. The main nurse was always trying to make sure that we got our specimens. No one else really cared, but the main nurse did because she knew that Planned Parenthood was, was getting compensated. So she wanted to make sure that everything was going great for us, that it was going great for them, and for us, and it was going great for them. And and are we agreed that $100 would keep you happy? Well, let me agree to find out from other affiliates yes. yes. in California what they're getting. And mm -hmm. if they're getting substantially more, then we can discuss it there. Yes. <laughs> and if this is in the ballpark, then that's fine. If it's low, still low, then we can talk about it. You would. What do you do? I want a Lamborghini. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I said I want a Lamborghini. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we all, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There was one instance where I know that one of the girls was working at the clinic and she was anti-abortion, but I'm not sure why she was working there. And she knew that I, I communicated with the staff, like, I need this specimen so I can get this. And there were times where she would always get rid of it before I could. And I would always ask her, I'm like, hey, I just told you I needed that. And she's like, oh, I, I forgot. And she did it on purpose all the time. And I went to the manager and I'm like, hey, I, this girl keeps throwing away my specimen. She's like, oh, let me talk to her. And I remember her talking. She's like, we need them here. Like, you need to let them have their specimens. But she was she was pretty adamant about it. She was trying to tell the staff, like, you need to listen to the, to the, the text. Like, you know, Planned Parenthood needs compensation. The harder and the more valuable the tissue, the more money you get. So if you're, if you can somehow procure a brain or a heart, you're going to get more money than just like chorionic villi or umbilical cord. That's basically what it is. So that, I guess that's an incentive to try and get the hard stuff to get more money. So I remember my first day, I was at the Concord Clinic and it was very early in the morning. I was with one of my trainers and I, I walk in, I meet the staff and I look over in the corner and there's a, a little, it's a little light tray with pie dishes on it. I'm like, hmm, okay. And then I see someone come in with a, a bottle of something and there was blood in it. I'm like, okay. And then they, they went over to the sink and they emptied it out in a strainer and put it on the pie dish and lit it up. And, and I'm like looking like what's going on. And my trainer comes over and she, she puts on gloves and she grabs some, some tweezers and she's picking the parts away from the, the vaginal tissue. And I'm, I've never had anxiety before this at all. So I'm looking and I don't know what's going on. I had no idea this was what was going to be happening, especially my first day. And uh, she's literally, she has tweezers and she's like, okay, well, this is the head, this is the arm, this is a leg. And then she goes, she hands them over. Like, oh, here you go. Can you show me some of the parts I just showed you? And I grabbed the tweezers. I'm like, because I didn't want to lose this job. I didn't know. Um, I was already stoked to get it. So I just, I did what she said. And the moment I took the tweezers, I, I put them in the dish. And I remember grabbing a leg and I said, this is a leg and... The moment I picked it up, I could just feel like death and pain. Like I've never felt that before, like shoot up through my body. And I started to, I blacked out basically. They got the, the smelling, the smelling salt. I woke up in the recovery room and looking around, I was really embarrassed, you know, who faints to their first job. And when nurses look at me, it's like, oh, new, you're new, huh? I'm like, yeah, don't worry. It still happens to a bunch of us. I'm like, really? It's like, yeah, some of us don't ever get over it. And I remember leaving that day, like, what have I got myself into? So would you call that intact? These are intact yeah, kidneys, okay. yes. Yeah. So if somebody needed... Because if needed I looked at that, I'd be like, that's good to go. Oh, yeah. As I turn Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Five stars. Yeah, I mean, you can. I mean, you could start a neural cell culture from this from this neural tissue right here. Like, would someone want that? This? Yeah. Any yeah. Of this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Someone would. Someone would definitely. This so was, even this is definitely. Weeks, even though it's really early, because I know that's when we talked about. This is this is neural time. tissue that people could take and look, and you see how it's still connected through the spinal cord back there. If you. Do we just send that all together, back. and they um, pick it up? You, you could actually, yeah. 
Yeah, some people some people prefer that actually because it you know keeps it a little more protected. Yeah, that eleven six was pretty Earlier. good. There was yeah. yeah, I mean there was like three or four samples we could have taken out of the eleven six. So that would Excellent. be you know, if we were doing like you know fifty to seventy five per specimen, that would be like two hundred three hundred, right? And we'd be comfortable with that. But like so it's like stuff like this. Like we don't want to do like just a flat fee of like two hundred and then you know, it's like <laughs> no, and you know the. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I think that I think the per item thing works a little better just because we can see how much we can get out of it. It's really just about if anyone were ever to, to ask them, well, what do you do for this sixty dollars? How can you justify that? You know, or are you basically just doing something completely egregious that you should be doing for free? I think for affiliates, the end of the day, they're a nonprofit. They just don't want to. They want to break even. And, and if they can do a little better than break even and do so in a, in a way that, you know, seems reasonable, they're yes. happy to do.